and welcome to the France 24 interview. I'm Marae Dundas. Now, be it for education, gender equality or climate change, the amount of money France devotes to the world's poorest nations is on the rise. 11.4 billion euros in 2018. That's a 40 per cent jump in just the last three years. Now, most of this money is channeled through the Agence Française de Development, a French development agency that is headed by Rémy Rieu, who has just been reappointed as chief executive for a second term. Many thanks for joining us here at France Uncap. Thanks a lot for your invitation. Now, you've just published a book, Reconciliations. It's a reflection on your career. Why a book and why this particular title? Oh, as you said, uh, I've just been reappointed, so I thought it was the right timing to put something on the table. And I did it also as a, as a citizen, because as you know, and that's the thesis of the book, the world is in a state of f fragmentation, and you see it in many, many areas, inequalities, climate, public and private. You, it was symbolized at the G20 summit la last week. And so we need to oppose another principle, another method, another vision. Let's call it uh, reconciliations, based, of course, on very concrete uh, experiences, that of uh, Agence Française de Développement I'm heading. But what needs to be reconciled? Is it the North with the South, the haves and the have-nots? What in particular do we need? Well, that's the beauty of the concept. It's reconciliation is a, is a, is a, co is a concept, is a method. It means you have to accept the other. It means you have to do something about truth more than justice. It means you have to change reality. It's a third state from two opposing situations. And, and you need to uh, have a length effort, in length effort, uh, with evaluation, with uh, rendezvous, to demonstrate that people are getting together. So this method could be applied to many issues, actually, to climate and growth. It can be issued to public and private. It can be applied, uh, I don't know, in the Sahel, where communities are in a very tense situation right now. And this is what the development policy, development instruments like AFD is uh, deploying, is liberating. Now, AFD, more than 2,500 projects in more than 100 countries. How do you measure if you're effective? And can you give me an idea of a particular project that you finance where you've thought, yeah, that's oh, money will, well spent? You will find in the book uh, many very concrete uh, examples. Histories of Reconciliation is the title of this uh, chapter. So, for instance, you have the case of uh, the city of Medellin, uh, which was, you know, the city of uh, Pablo Escobar. So uh, drug cartels, very, very violent, difficult situation. And, and a, a new mayor came. And he asked us for a loan of about $350 million. And this loan helped us refurbish, renovate the whole transportation system, uh, a tramway, uh, but also a metro cable, uh, which connected the favelas uh, of the high uh, positions in the city to the center uh, of the city. And it touches now 350,000 people a day. And it's reconciled the city. So this is something very powerful politically, socially. And if you go to Medellin, you will see it. So that's one example. And you have many other uh, cases in the book. Now, you touched earlier on this idea of private public. We are talking a lot more about private money in the area of development. Is it time to put aside the, this concept of aid and just talk business? Um, there's a new framework. It was adopted by the United Nations in 2015, September. It's called the Sustainable Development Goals. And the Sustainable Development Goals is very, very ambitious. Uh, it deals with so many issues. It wants to change the situation of uh, all uh, populations. And so you will not finance SDGs with ODA, with aid. So uh, we need to keep ODA, we need to increase ODA, as President Macron is doing it right now in France, because ODA is what um, will never be financed by others. So when you do education in the Sahel, I mean, there's no private sector uh, offer on the table. So you need a public effort uh, to do it. But, but this public money, this public capacity has also to incentivize, uh, redirect other flows public and mostly private, you're right, in the direction of SDGs. So that, that's exemplary in the case of climate. We all know that's for climate. We need to change the way we invest 
all of us, public and private. And so how do we use our, our budget to guarantee, to invest, to incentivize others, including the financial sector, to turn to climate? Interestingly, you touch on ODA. So we, call it, we call it sustainable development investment in the book to, to, to explain what this new framework could be commensurate with the ambition of SDGs. It's largely agreed that ODA, overseas development aid, won't, assistance won't actually be enough. But 2017, France's development aid stood at 0.43 of gross national income, which is significantly below the 0.7 set by the UN. Other countries such as the United Kingdom, Denmark, Sweden can reach this objective. Why isn't France there yet? Uh, we're on track. I mean, the, the <laughs> President Macron committee... It's in the right direction. We were at 0.38 uh, when I, I, I was appointed uh, in 2015. 0.44, President committed to 0.55, on the way to the 0.7. So, so we will have more and more traction, um, but also to, to transform as a platform and go in the direction of others, especially other institutions in the South. I'm heading a very unique group, which is called IDFC, International Development Finance Club. It's, it's discussed also in the book, which is the gathering of the largest national and regional development banks in the world in China, in Brazil, South Africa, Morocco, all over the place. And how could we use this budget capacity from the French government also to help reinforce capacities and make these institutions that are so powerful in their own country, in their own constituency, turn to SDG as well. And it's not ODA, it's something else. It's financing for development. Interestingly, earlier this year you went to China where you signed deals worth 250 million euros, including a loan to help with its energy transition. Yeah. Many have asked you and will continue to ask you why China, the world's second biggest economy, needs financing from France. Well, I'm, I'm the French development agency, but I'm also the Chinese development agency. Because basically what we are doing in China is China is, is investing in AFD because we are buying bonds and the Chinese are buying our bonds. And then we are lending to China. <laughs> so somehow we are an instrument where the Chinese think it's useful for them to put money in and then to, to have the money back. Why? Yeah, that's because a good we're, why. Because yeah. we're in a world in common. And for instance, I was in the, in the Shaanxi uh, region uh, during my trip, my last trip, and we were discussing um, coal mines because, you know, the Chinese, they are closing very rapidly thousands of mines. And I had a fascinating discussion with the mayor of a city where there was the largest coal mine in Asia. And he was explaining me that uh, he was closing it by September. And all the people in the place, they are miners. Mm. So he, have a huge, he has a huge question of transition, social transition, economic transition. And he was asking me, he showed me a, a PowerPoint where there was a picture and there were elements on something that happened in France. Because we closed our mines 20 years ago. And he was showing me a very famous city in the north of France called Los Angoel, <laughs> where there was the, the, the largest mine in the place, and where, which has transformed, thanks to the, another mayor, in, a, in a, well, a magnificent experience of sustainable development. They are recycling it all. They are, um, and they are investing in renewable energies. And so some, someone deep in the countryside of China, they heard of it and they were asking Agence Française de Développement to help them share this knowledge. So that's, that's what it's about. It's not about aid, you see that. It's about sharing development experiences between nations willing to cooperate. That's what we are doing in China. And I think that's, that's of the interest of, of the whole world. Because we have to keep the coal uh, mines uh, of Shaanxi. Uh, the coal mines in, everywhere in the, ground, in the world. In the ground. Which leads to my next question. Development aid has obviously evolved since a focus purely on poverty in the 90s to now what we call the sustainable development yeah. goals. Has climate change been the biggest change to the way we treat our public money, the way we loan um, uh, development money? Is that been the single biggest changing factor? I think so. Uh, you see, for instance, in uh, the positions now taken by uh, Minister Stewart, Rory Stewart of DFID, 
is, is now what we did, uh, I don't know, 15 years ago at, at AFD, is trying to reconcile uh, uh, the fight against poverty and the fight against climate change. And, and we know that these two issues are going together. It was what happened in France with the Gilets jaunes. I mean, it was about a carbon tax, and people said it's unfair. Carbon, so uh, you climate have to, justice. You have to find compromises between, of course, the necessary fight against climate change and who is paying for it. And, and, and that's a deep, strong... Uh, political issue. And then we, you need to have financial institutions, to, to public, that are able to help uh, make these deals. Um, so yes, climate change, climate finance uh, is completely changing uh, our policy without forgetting that we need to be fair and we need to pay attention to the poorest. Many thanks for joining us. Remy Ryu, Chief lot. Executive of the Agence Française de Développement. The book, again, Reconciliations, will be released in English after summer. Many thanks for joining us for this edition of the interview. Stay tuned because there's more news and headlines coming up.